Um, hello, everyone. Uh, topics for today's lecture is uh, political parties. So uh, the few major functions of uh, political parties in, uh, in general. Uh, when they're in power, they try, uh, they try to introduce uh, legislation uh, regarding various issues uh, in public policy. Uh, they um, propose uh, laws how like how those uh, regulations and, and new policies uh, will be adopted. Uh, important function of political parties uh, in the United States is um, uh, nominated candidates for uh, various offices. And it's important to know that uh, parties uh, nominate candidates uh, at federal level for president, for members of Congress, uh, at state level for governors, uh, stuff like this, um, members of state legislatures and at local levels as well. So uh, this uh, nomination function uh, goes through like all levels of uh, US uh, political system. And uh, another important function parties do, they uh, help uh, people to run their campaigns. Uh, one of the uh, few examples of um, uh, signal systems political parties use uh, are um, uh, party platforms. Uh, Im important thing about party platforms, uh, they uh, signal to um, potential um, constituents uh, what they stand for, uh, but uh, it's very hard to implement party platforms in many cases. Uh, because in the United States system, uh, in many cases, um, there is a divided government, a situation in which, uh, let's say, president is controlled by one party and um, uh, one chamber of Congress is controlled by another party. Uh, and it happens all the time. Um, they usually, at least recently, in the last, let's say, 30 years, uh, presidents can implement their agendas and party can implement their party platforms, at least some of the ideas in those uh, platforms. Uh, if uh, they have uh, like majority everywhere, for instance, um, during the uh, first two years of Biden administration, when Democrats had full control of the Congress and obviously the White House, uh, Biden administration passed, was able to pass through Congress uh, two major pieces on um, infrastructure and environment. Uh, during the first two years uh, of Trump administration, when Republicans had control of, uh, again, Congress and obviously the White House, uh, Trump uh, was able to pass um, um, tax cuts for corporations and individuals. And again, during the first two years of Obama administration, when Democrats had control of Congress and White House, uh, Obama was able to push uh, through Congress Affordable Care Act uh, and uh, Dodd-Frank Act, uh, which regulates financial uh, sector in the United States. So party platforms can be implemented in recent American history only when a uh, particular party has control of uh, Congress and the White House. Otherwise, uh, it just doesn't happen. A couple of differences between political parties and interest groups. Uh, political parties uh, want to be in power. Uh, they want to like control the whole agenda. Uh, interest groups, for the most part, uh, they're concerned about like a single issue, a single policy area. For instance, uh, pharmaceutical researchers and manufacturers of America, a uh, trade group for um, companies which produce uh, various medicines, they only they are only concerned about drug policy in the United States. They're not concerned about you know, railroads or something else. And most interest groups, uh, they try to focus on a particular policy area. There are some major, uh, major like umbrella groups like US uh, Chamber of Commerce. Uh, their broader agenda is to like uh, relax government regulations and low uh, taxes. Uh, but most groups are like single interest. And political parties want to control the whole public policy, the whole agenda. Uh, an example, for instance, how uh, all those uh, third parties uh, do not work in American system uh, because of the a bunch of things. Uh, first of all, uh, the electoral system, uh, which uh, is present in the United States, it, it has like different names, uh, majoritarian system, 
or winner take all system uh, to, to a relative vote system like let's talk about a little bit more so um uh, during the history of the United States uh, um, there have been like two parties but they like changed over time initially the United States had federalist and anti-federalist uh, groups then there have been Democratic Party and National Republic Republicans later Whig Party and for the last uh, like a century or so uh, we have Democratic Party and uh, Republican Party and again, a third party has no chance in the United States. One of the effects of this uh, winner-take-all uh, electoral uh, system is that uh, this kind of system limits uh, the number of candidates for a particular post because everybody knows uh, only like member of Republican or Democratic Party is going to win uh, an election. And also, uh, we don't take all system prevents uh, people from like staying in politics uh, in, in long term if they lose election because they're not able to mobilize um, their like support groups. Usually, in American uh, system people run for presidents like once, sometimes twice, but nobody runs for president like uh, cycle after cycle after cycle. It it doesn't happen in a system like that. Uh, there are like hole in the world there in countries where they do have election. Uh, basically, there are two systems, uh, pl plurality voting, majoritarian, or it's called a majoritarian system or winner-take-all system. When uh, whoever gets uh, most votes uh, becomes like a, becomes a particular official. And in proportional representation, uh, it's pretty common in parliamentary republics uh, on the ballot, uh, you do, you see like names of the parties, uh, not the candidates themselves, and you vote for a bunch of political parties, and they get um, uh, their share of uh, votes uh, in parliament, uh, and it roughly represents the share of votes they got in um, uh, during the uh, during the um, election. Uh, sometimes uh, third party candidates, um, they can kind of scrap elections. For example, many people believe that uh, based on like exit polls and other stuff uh, that um, uh, Ralph uh, Nader, um, he kind of lost uh, Al Gore, uh, his presidency. He, uh, he ran as independent, uh, but uh, some like uh, left-winning uh, Democrats, uh, they voted for him. Uh, depriving Al Gore of uh, needed votes, which would allow him to beat um, George W. Bush in Electoral College. Yeah, by the way, it's important to know that still um, uh, Al Gore won the popular vote, but in American system, a popular vote doesn't matter, only uh, winning Electoral College matters. Yeah, uh, what, uh, what um, kind of... Uh, uh, elements in political system uh, limit the number of parties in the United States. Again, this uh, plurality voting system, again, it has many names, majoritarian system or winner-take-all system, electoral uh, college system, and uh, companion election laws. Thing is that administration of elections in this country is uh, mostly a prerogative of uh, states. Uh, they um, regulate most aspects of uh, elections in, in this country. Uh, and for instance, in many states where they have a primary, uh, primary system, uh, they pass uh, specific votes, uh, specific laws uh, which uh, regulate uh, that like two parties, Democrats and Republicans, how they conduct primaries and how like whole nomination process uh, works. So this like um, system where you have Democrats and Republicans it is codified in many states uh, through the um, regulations of uh, primaries, which are, again, uh, regulated by, by states. In, uh, in states where they have caucuses, uh, party leaders uh, in those states, like Iowa, for instance, uh, they regulate uh, how um, those caucuses uh, take place. Uh, sometimes... Uh, when ideologies uh, shift, 
um, there is realignment happening in party system. For instance, uh, like in, in 19th century, Republican Party was kind of aggressive and Democratic Party was kind of conservative. It was a Republican Party uh, who like abolished uh, slavery, for instance. But later, currently, what we have is that uh, Democratic Party is mostly like liberal and the Republican Party is mostly conservative. So there was a realignment. And it started happening in the 60s when um, like conservative uh, Democrats uh, in like southern states, uh, they one by one like switch to become Republicans. And now like basically we don't have this phenomenon uh, like uh, Democrat from the South. Yeah, and these are like differences. Part in the electorate are like group of people who identify as Democrat or Republican. In some cases, when you register for driver's license, state ID, something like this, uh, you might be asked to identify uh, like, are you Democrat or are you Republican? A party organization is a, a structure which, um, on different levels, uh, which uh, regulate. Uh, uh, nominations uh, of candidates, uh, stuff like this, fundraising. And uh, what we can see here uh, that like younger people uh, lean uh, liberal and democratic and more older people usually lean more conservative and Republican. Um, why it's important to vote in uh, party organizations? Uh, well, you can um, select uh, candidates uh, who I will run for a particular position from a particular party. And it's uh, it's important to see like who will see in a general uh, general election. So if when you uh, if you vote in a primary or in a caucus, uh, you affect uh, like the person who you will see in in a general election. Um and again, party system uh, has um, all levels, uh, national party um, committee, uh, state um, state party organization and local party organizations. Uh, national uh, uh, national party committee, it's like uh, RNC, Republican uh, National Committee, or DNC, Democratic National Committee. Uh, what they do for the most part, uh, they um, organize a national convention a nomination of uh, a candidate for for president this is the main function uh, state um, state party organizations uh, they do uh, they regulate how uh, primaries and caucuses uh, uh, are conducted and who gets to nominate it to a particular uh, system in in caucus or in a primary and um, uh, local organizations, they deal with uh, uh, nominating uh, people for uh, various uh, local offices. Yeah, these are like uh, um, a bunch of uh, uh, different um, uh, functions uh, various uh, local organizations uh, have in, the, in this country. And sometimes it could be important uh, to participate in national convention, uh, even if uh, you are not uh, like a candidate. For instance, in 2004, uh, Barack Obama made a very like, impressive speech uh, during national convention and um, created a name for himself. And later he became president. Uh, and again, uh, party and government are um, officials who belong to a particular party on different levels, federal, state, and local, uh, who try to implement um, uh, party agenda in their offices. And party and elector are a group of people who vote uh, for a particular party. Um, problems uh, with divided government. Uh, if you have a divided government where a particular branch of Congress or like whole Congress um, belongs to one party and White House presidency belongs to another party. That means that basically neither side can uh, actually accomplish what they said uh, during the campaign uh, since we have party polarization, a sharp divide between um, 
uh, Democrats and Republicans nowadays. It wasn't always the case. For instance, in 1980s, uh, Republican uh, Ronald Reagan was able to work with uh, Democrat Tip O'Neill, Speaker of the House at the time, to pass a bunch of um, pieces of legislation. So uh, party polarization we observe now, it wasn't always the case in American politics. Um, so a couple of, I would say, benefits from of divided governments. Sometimes parties compromise uh, to achieve a particular policy goal. Um, it doesn't happen very often recently in American politics. But one important function of um, a divided government, um, whenever there is a president, um, after two years, there is the election in Congress, uh, the whole House of Representatives and uh, one third of the Senate gets elected. And in many cases, it's kind of check on the president. Uh, at some point, uh, public feels that uh, uh, president and his majority in Congress uh, doing something wrong. So they elect a position party um, in the House for the most part. And it creates a system of uh, like balance uh, on the president and majority party. And this is why it's kind of hard to implement uh, uh, major policy change in this country. But on the other hand, it prevents a majority party from implementing some like radical agenda, which has like zero support uh, or like little support uh, in the general population. And here uh, we can see that um, uh, how polarization uh, grew uh, in U.S. Congress. So here you see you have some people in the middle, kind of substantive number in like 1970s. And like uh, recently, there are like not many people in the middle. And um, here what we see again, the same trend uh, in the house some people in the middle in 70s and basically uh, nobody in the middle um, nowadays. And it makes hard to pass um, uh, new pieces of legislation. Uh, there is a difference, uh, um, a little, there is some difference uh, though. As you can see, if you compare, uh, for instance, uh, Republican Party in the Senate with the Republican Party in the House, uh, you will see that uh, uh, really uh, far right, uh, uh, really far right people, uh, they are more like dominant in the house. And the reason for that is um, uh, many people in again red and blue states, uh, and they have very safe um, districts where their major competition would be uh, someone in primary. They in those districts they don't care about general election and how you and since in primaries mostly like political activists uh vote people who follow politics like very closely uh, the way to win a primary is to express more radical ideas more leftish ideas or more like right wing ideas this is how you win a primary in the senate you see that uh, there are some right wing people but the numbers are a little bit like fewer and the reason for the difference is that even in like blue state like uh, new york everybody knows there are like substantial number of republicans in upstate new york or even if you are from alabama or louisiana there are some major urban areas where you have democrats voting so uh, senators they have to run uh, st uh, statewide elections and they have to avoid being like too radical to left or to right wing in most cases yeah party polariz polarization is the problem uh, currently existing in the united states uh, politics where parties become uh, more and more um, uh, divergent in their ideologies. They are far, far apart from each other. And uh, this would be an example of uh, party polarization. But recently, even uh, Liz Cheney, who like pretty conservative, uh, she wasn't conservative enough. So she, recently she lost uh, her seat in the house because she uh, 
didn't support Trump. She said of this that uh, Biden was legitimately elected president uh, and Trump should stop saying that the vote was uh, was stolen. And she lost uh, uh, she lost uh, her seat in the in the house. So uh, that's state of the affairs now. There are like a couple of reasons for party polarization. Uh, one would be uh, technology. Uh, people, some people, um, actually a lot of people get their news from social media. And since algorithms on those social media work in a way to feed you uh, some stuff which already aligns with your ideology, uh, you just get exposed to one side of the argument and you're like kind of reinforcing yourself in your belief. Um, so it happens to Republicans and it happens to Democrats. If you are a liberal, it's unlikely you are watching Fox News. And if you are um, <clears throat> conservative, it's unlikely you are watching uh, MSNBC, for instance. Another obvious cause for... Um, uh, party polarization is uh, gerrymandering uh, after like every 10 years and there's a census and um, uh, state legislatures uh, they uh, redraw congressional maps uh, in the house obviously right uh, they redraw maps and uh, they try to favor they try to create maps in a way to allow a benefit uh, for for their party Yeah, um, so um, what are the effects of uh, partisan polarization? Uh, it's harder to pass major pieces of legislation because parties uh, view uh, various uh, public policy issues differently. And um, another thing would be uh, people in the middle, uh, they are uh, participating in political process less and less because they don't see like anyone is representing them. Oops, thank you very much.